remember studying table joins in the last video, and we were primarily talking about how do you make a table join. But I had mentioned that one thing people often don't expect when they make a join is that the table doesn't, or the join doesn't make the table a permanent part of the GIS vector data file that they're joining it to. The table only stays part of the file for the purposes of a particular project. And often in the beginning, people get very confused by this when it, it, that permanent attachment doesn't happen. But as I said, there's actually very good reasons why you don't want for the data table to be permanently attached, especially by default. And so I want to take a look at that reasoning now. And so we'll take a look at the use of table joins for data management in detail in this particular video. And in order to do this, I'm going to use as an example the different representation of trees that we had discussed in a previous video. If you recall, when we were studying geometric representation, we had the example of three different ways that we could represent trees. We said that we might be interested in representing trees as points, and that might be analogous to taking a GPS receiver outside and collecting GPS points for each one of the trees and then putting one of those points at each location for the tree. Alternatively, if you're a forester who's interested in the estimation of biomass in a forest, you might prefer to think about these trees in terms of their diameter at breast height. So that information may be collected in the field, and then the trees could be represented as a roughly circular area or roughly circular areas that represented the size of each tree trunk at maybe 1.4 meters above the ground. Then we also gave the example of if you are a landscape or a, a architect or a, an engineer, a landscape engineer of some kind, you might prefer to think about these trees in terms of the maximal extent of their canopy. We say that sometimes uh, people in those fields are interested in the maximum extent of the canopy regardless of the number of trees that happen to make up a particular clump or cluster. Let's ignore that particular complication for the purposes of this video and the sake of the example that I'm giving here and just assume that each one of these trees, each tree on campus for instance, has its own canopy uh, outlined and, and demarcated by uh, this cloud shape. Now, uh, which of these uh, representations of the tree happens to be best? Well, we said that that's an impossible question to answer. We can only answer a question like that in terms of or in relation to a particular purpose to which we're going to be putting these uh, data sets. Which is the best representation to answer a particular question or to solve a particular problem or conduct a certain kind of analysis? We can answer a question like that, but we can't answer it in general. But here's the problem. What if I don't know to what purpose the data is going to be put? That happens uh, uh, very often, actually. Maybe I'm the GIS manager for the entire university campus, and there are lots of different people who come into my office asking me for GIS data about the campus. They all have their own different reasons. They're all putting the data uh, to different kinds of purposes. They're all doing different kinds of analysis. It's my job just to make sure that I get them the data that they're looking for. So what do I do? Well, in that case, it's probably perfectly reasonable for me as the GIS manager to store all three different kinds of representations of these trees, all, different three, all three different geometric representations of the trees, inside my GIS data set for the campus or in a GIS uh, geodatabase about the campus. I might store all three. And that seems perfectly reasonable. I might have the point file, I might have the areas for the breast height of the trees, and I might also have the uh, canopy delineation for the trees. Okay, but then here's my next problem. What if I'm trying to keep track of some information about these trees, such as when the last time each tree happened to be pruned? That sounds like perfectly reasonable information that I might want to store about the trees, and it definitely sounds like information that would be kept in an attribute table. When is the last time that the landscaping department got around to pruning that particular tree? Store that in an attribute table. So we'd need a field in the attribute table for the last pruning, and it seems like that would be an attribute field of the date data type. But where are we going to store this attribute information? 
which one of these data files is going to have that information attached to it. I've got three different shape files, maybe if I'm using shape files, for the representation of these trees. I've got one point and two different area files that all have a representation of the exact same tree. So which shape file or which GIS data vector data file in general gets the pruning data in its attribute table? This is a problem because regardless of how you might want to represent the tree or how the tree needs to be represented in your analysis, you might very well want to know when the last time the tree was pruned. That's information that you might want to be able to access regardless of what kind of representation, what type of geometric representation of the tree you're interested in. So I might record it in one of these files or in another, but if I do that, then if you're looking at one of the other files, then you go to open up the attribute table and you wouldn't have the information. And that's not good. I want to be able to get this information to everybody who needs information about the trees regardless of the geometric representation that they're looking at. So another option then would be to record this information about the pruning of the trees in every single file that I've got. Maybe each one of these data files could have a field in it that tells me when the tree was pruned. But if I do that, I'm violating a major rule of data management. And this is called the golden rule of data management, in effect, in, actually. And this golden rule of data management is that you should only store data once. You only store data one time in any particular data set or any particular database. Never copy data ever. That's your golden rule. If you put that attribute uh, column about pruning it into more than one of these data files, then you're violating that rule, obviously. You're storing the information in triplicate. And what happens uh, when the tree is pruned again, uh, or that data set needs to be updated, what do you have to go and do if you've got it in three places? Well, you have to update that information in the three different places. If the landscaping department comes in and says they just pruned the particular tree that's on the corner of the quad, and you say, okay, great, I need to enter today's date into my data set. Well, if I'm storing that pruning information in three different files, I've got three different places I've got to go and update that. And that's not any good. It's not efficient. It's not the way that you want to run data management. I mean, for one thing, what if I forget uh, and don't uh, update one of those three files? Well, then all of a sudden my information is uh, inconsistent and I don't have current information in some place. Uh, what if someone else is updating the data that day? Maybe I'm out sick and somebody else says, okay, well, no problem, I'll update the file. And they don't know that I am being very inefficient in storing all of this information in triplicates. They just go to one of the files, update the information, and then once again, my data is now inconsistent. I've got a bad data set. Uh, what if I make a mistake? What if there's some kind of mistake in the data entry? And now I need to go back and fix the mistake. Well, if I need to go back and fix a mistake and I've got it stored in three places, then I've got three places that I need to go to in order to fix the area fix the error. Uh, of course, if I'm uh, typing in dates, if I say, okay, I'm just going to type in all of this information three times, then I'm multiplying the chance that I'm going to make some type of typographic error three times. Okay, I'm three times more likely to make this make an entry error, error if I've got to uh, enter it into three different places than if I only were entering it into one table. Inconsistency of data is bad for any type of reason. Um, people would then have to figure out which one happened to be the correct data and in which one of their which one of the data sets there was an error this isn't any good this is not a situation that you want to be in and it's one that we want to be sure that we avoid and this is really the situation where the table join really begins to shine for the purposes of data management so the strategy here in a situation like this when i have three different possible geometric representations for the same feature but i've got one attribute uh, information or one set of attribute information that i would like to have accessible from all three should be to only keep the unique identifier for each individual tree in this case in the attribute table. So you open up the attribute table of if these are shape files, you open up the attribute table and all you see is the unique identifier for that tree, that tree's unique identifier. 
That makes the attribute table in each one of these data files rather minimal. But then what you do is take all of the other tabular data that you'd want to store about these trees and you put them into a standalone data table also that includes the unique identifier for each tree. So you're setting up that unique identifier as the key. I've got the key field of the unique identifier in each one of these shape files, and then I've got the key uh, unique field, the key identifier over here in the standalone data table as well. And then in that standalone data table, I put the last time each tree was pruned, as well as any other information that I'd like to store about them, uh, such as maybe when the tree was planted, or what species the tree is, all of that information that I would like to be able to access from any geometry, or any geometric representation of the tree, I put into that standalone data table. Then, when I want to be able to access that information from one of the geometry files, then what I do is I execute a table join between it and the standalone data table. I don't want that table to be permanently attached to any one of these data files in this case. That would violate my rule, my golden rule of data management. I only want uh, I want the only place for the data to be stored about those trees, as far as the attribute information goes, to be stored in that standalone data table. Then for display and reference purposes, it can be shown appended to the attribute tables because I can execute that table join. Then I don't have to worry about entering the data into that table or into the attribute tables more than once. I don't have to worry about updating it in triplicate. I don't have to worry about the threefold multiplication of potential errors or fixing errors when the three triplicate data storage, you know, three, three attribute columns are being stored in triplicate. I don't have to worry about all of that. The data is held once, it's stored only in that table, but then whenever I need to access it, I can access it in multiple places because of the table join. And that really is the power of the table join from the data management perspective. There's just one place that information is stored, just one place where I'm going to make sure that uh, that data is current and it's updated. This becomes extremely efficient if, for example, I take this table and I host it on a GIS server in the cloud. And then I tell all of the GIS analysts who are working uh, in my particular organization that whenever they need the information that's on this table, they should just execute the join to the table in whatever project that they're working on. Then, if this information in the data table gets updated, or if new information gets added, then it will automatically be added to the analyst projects in which they're using the table, uh, or using that data table as part of the join. They don't ever have to worry about whether or not uh, they have access to the latest and up-to-date da uh, data table. If, as long as they just have this join to the data table that's on the server, they're going to have the latest and up-to-date data table automatically. If there was a, a mistake that was fixed, they automatically get the fix. Uh, that is uh, an extremely powerful thing about executing table joins and using them in this way. You can see that if they had permanently attached the data table uh, to their vector GIS data file that they are working on, then they would have effectively copied that information. They would have copied that information from the table that I'm holding on the server and sticking it to the GIS data file that they're working with. This would be a violation of the golden rule of information management because there would now be a copy of the data table that's on the server that's going to be updated and kept current, but then on whatever day they happen to make this uh, copy, they would have copied all of the information from, the or from that standalone data table to the attribute table of their data file and are probably keeping it on their own local hard drive now. Then that information, since they've copied it, would not be updated when someone updated that information on the server because it's not being pulled from the server every time. That's when you get into multiple outdated copies of the same information and the data efficiency of your organization really begins to plummet. It goes to, begins to go downhill very fast. Just having the one file data table on the server, having everybody joined to it, and everybody automatically getting the latest, most updated, most correct information is really the way that you want to go.
Knowing how to design a system like this and managing all of these different kinds of table joins is a very important part of geodatabase design and geodatabase management if you end up going down that route. Whenever you're using different representations of multiple features, multiple geometric representations of multiple features, whenever you're sharing data, whenever you need to access it uh, and keep uh, the latest data tables current, uh, really the, the table join becomes an absolutely essential and integral part of your procedure for storing and managing your GIS attribute table, and it's really not a GIS a tool or GIS functionality that you want to be without. So really get to, to know it and understand why it's such an important part of GIS data management.